uh, gentlemen, let me just start off with the precious metals this year. And uh, Cliff, let's start with you. What what are you seeing uh, right now with precious metals? Because it had an amazing 2016 coming out of this horrible downtrend, uh, especially in the mining stocks that uh, the, the underlying companies, uh, just a big bull run last year. And then uh, we've kind of had the fall and the, and the and the winter months uh, a pullback, but now it looks very very solid here. What is your data showing you? What 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 are you what do you see happening for the precious metals in the near term and overall for 2017? Um, well, a couple of different ways to look at it. I've got like geographic references that suggest that um, Australia precious metals are going to take off. Uh, Indonesia, we're going to have a couple of um, uh, very successful companies that are or actually Indonesia slash Malaysia um, in the archipelago in there uh, are going to take off with their production. So I, I do actually have that. I do have some indications of a geographic resurgence in mining that that way. Insofar as uh, prices and these sorts of things relative to the U.S. dollar, we're going to go through a um, period of um, disruption here from March through May and then a slight hiatus and then another period that's going to be even worse from, say, end of July through to the end of the year. During that period of time, I expect things like the uh, stocks, uh, especially to be very hammered by uh, what uh, Bill Holter calls truth bombs. So there's going to be a couple of different impacts on mining. Uh, some mining companies are going to be turn out to be pristine. And so it'll, unbeknownst to them, just the fact that they did good business and weren't um, hypothecated uh, is going to result in a, a, an influx of uh, capital their direction. Because, see, the data is showing us that this um, issue of, um, of fake stocks uh, uh, where where there's five or ten times as many stocks as as have actually been issued on some companies is really going to come to the fore in this uh, second half of our little uh, period of disruption, and so we're going to have all these sort of within the mining industry trends that are going to affect us that way. And then on the other side of it is from what we're viewing here is going to be an upward pressure on price and maybe even kicking into something close to hyperinflation as we go through late summer and into fall. You believe, uh, just to be clear, a hyperinflation could happen in the United States with th within the year? Here's here's our issue. Um, yes, that is the case. We have a situation that uh, is uh, has developed over decades on one uh, path of our data, uh, forecasting all the hyperinflation. Uh, that there's nothing within those data sets that are saying that we're derailed on that. But it but we do have a lot of new data relative to uh, the uh, new administration and the potential to derail the planned hyperinflation. So uh, if you were to look at the last 20 years and the moves of the uh, uh, power elite and the Federal Reserve, you might think uh, perhaps rightly so, that there was an intent to cause certain things to occur within the uh, dollar. Our data at the moment is showing that very much like the 1930s, the dollar is going to strengthen. Uh, very much like the 1930s, the dollar will strengthen even as gold and silver rise. Uh, in this case, we're also adding Bitcoin in there. The same kind of um, emotional trends are going to drive these things as had occurred in the 1930s. Now, the question for us is, what's going to happen relative to, uh, or uh, what's going to happen as a result of the Fed over this summer? Because our data sets show and have for a number of years that the Federal Reserve was on a path that would lead to fundamentally to hyperinflation over this summer. And those, those um, macro indicators that are saying that the, the dollar is degrading in value are still all there in spite of this apparent emotional turnaround in a number of, of areas. So, so it's very contradictory, but we show the dollar sort of rising in value relative to all the other paper currencies. 
and at the same time falling in value relative to gold, silver, and Bitcoin. And I'm not an economist, okay? I don't pretend to understand how all of these mechanisms are going to uh, work themselves out in the in uh, manifesting. I just know that we have these linguistics that we've got a pretty good high um, level of confidence in that we'll be discussing this rather odd state of affairs that might indeed induce the Fed to get into real hyperinflation from May onward. We'll know for sure which of these sets are going to be dominant I would think by mid-April, because there's um, both of these sets, I think, are mutually exclusive, but I don't know that that's the case, actually. But one set shows the Fed reacting to uh, pressure on the dollar uh, by both raising interest rates and hyperinflating. And the pressure on the dollar is going to come as a result of the, uh, I guess you'd have to call it the crack-up of the uh, euro as a currency. So we've actually got data sets now that show a resurgent drachma and a lira. When that will occur, I don't know, but I suspect maybe before the end of next year, certainly, and maybe by the end of this year. That's fascinating. Uh, Lior uh, with wealthresearchgroup.com. Let me ask you this. Uh, Cliff just forecasts that we could be looking at uh, potential hyperinflation. What is your understanding of how investors and hedge funds uh, are best to prepare a portfolio for such a case. And also, if you were seeing um, anything on the gold front that perhaps others are also uh, predicting a big move in the price of gold through their, through their capital allocations. Sure. I, I think for 2017, because there's so many um unknowns basically you've got uh the trump trump victory along with the fed raising rates for for the um, fourth time since 1971 so uh, there there has only been four tightening periods between 72 and 74 77 1980 2004 and 2006 and this tightening period that started in December 2015 and so every time they have under this fiat monetary system have raised rates um, what happened is the the real interest rates in the economy tend to stay negative so official US year-over-year price inflation right now is about 2.5 and the the uh, the Fed funds rates is not that, and so we are in a negative environment, and that means you need to focus on four things. You need to focus on wealth preservation, and you can do that by allocating some of your funds into the physical precious metals, into cryptocurrencies such as as Bitcoin, as Cliff uh, um, rightly uh, noted. Uh, and you can and you can allocate them into other chaos hedge type um, assets, but you should not only focus on that. That has been very volatile and very dangerous over time. If you're looking to grow your wealth, so if you're looking to take some of your funds and put it in vehicles that grow in these types of environments, you need to think about companies that have consumer loyalty. Because if you have that, even if they're, if, even if they have to push these prices up to consumers, they can still have the same amount of of uh, uh, of customer buying their products. I'll give you an example. Say if Coca Cola, for instance, mm. l- raises their their Coke by just a, a few margins because inflation has gone up and they, and sugar prices have gone up their uh you know all, all their operations have gone up and they push this price to the consumer to keep their margins up probably there's not going to be a lot of consumers that reject coca-cola from now on so that kind of company uh, for instance could be very good and, and on wealth research group on the site on the on the top menu on the left left tab we have wealth stocks which are download PDFs about six companies that we believe are exactly the type of stocks that you would want to cash in uh, over the over this two to five year period. But not only that, we see a lot of hedge funds 
and a lot of smart investors, including uh, Drunken Miller, who um, has made, uh, as you know, he's made big moves in gold, and now he's back. And the reason I think he's back is because this type of environment where inflation rises, but you still have negative rates, and oil prices are pretty stable, is very, very favorable for mining shares. And the reason is their operational costs are mostly derived of energy costs. So that's very important to, to understand. If I, um, you know, we are a wealth research group, we focus on the best type of mining entrepreneurs in order to stick with the best, with the top jockeys. Uh, Cliff, uh, Trump. Can I respond to that real, pl- absolutely, real quick? Absolutely, absolutely. Go ahead. Uh, something that we need to note here that just jumps out from my data uh, is the, you know, we're in the woo-woo business, the far reaches of what would be considered even art, let alone science, but nonetheless, we have some level of accuracy. And so I would want to call, if we're going to talk stocks, I mean, like talk uh, actual companies and stuff, I would caution people, and I've not, not read your list, so I don't know whether I'll step on any of those or not, but I would caution people about assuming that a... Um, uh, consumer company base is going to be adequate to grow wealth over the this next year. And the reason that I'm going to caution you on that is because of something that's been in our reports now for a couple of months, and I'm even developing and yet more of it within this most recent report, and that is this blowback or backlash against consumer companies that have been uh, facilitators and um, supporters of the pedophilia network that is being rounded up globally at the moment. And so I've actually got data in my data sets that say this company, the other company, and so on are going to be hit by uh, really, uh, from their viewpoint, very damaging uh, consumer reactions when it comes out that these firms were involved at very deep levels not only in personnel, but in their, in their actions. So as a, as a example, I would suggest that if anyone wanted to see the kind of actions that would be, uh, uh, or the kind of uh, prompts that would get action out of the consumer, you might look at the cartoon companies and just pick a, a cartoon manufacturer for children and then go and uh, Google them and see if uh, with the word subliminal. If they've got those two together, if there is a background of subliminal uh, text being put into those cartoons, you can bet that this company is going to have huge economic problems by the end of this year. We've got a, a wave, if you will, of psychological response that will roll through the, uh, the states here uh, that may actually crush uh, what you and I think of as mega global household name kind of companies at this moment. I assume I assume you're referencing to Disney and beyond. But yes, Disney's got it. Disney's got. Oh, they're in a world of hurt. Yeah, but we can start talking about any of the manufacturers of cartoons, and you can also start talking about the manufacturers of consumer goods. So if you can find a tie now that is easily accessible within a simple search, and this is one of the ways you can analyze trends. Does it pop right up even in the controlled media of Google, or and then go and look on a DuckDuckGo or um, some of these other. Uh, 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 search engines. And if you get a different response, you'll see that Google's hiding something. But look at the top five or 10 responses that come up for any of the companies that's going to be accused of sexualizing children. These guys are going to have a, a global problem that may extend for, you know, five or 10 years, and a lot of them won't survive. Just a caution. Now, on the other side, I think mining companies are good. And we're also getting some links between the mining companies and our Antarctica subsets in a big way. So some of these companies that have mining expertise are going to uh, benefit from the Antarctica boom, even though not necessarily going there to mine. They may be hired by officialdom to come on in and dig stuff out for them. Uh, Lior and, and um, Cliff, I want to ask you guys this. So you've got a Republican Congress and you've got a Republican president. Any type of crisis, whether it's hyperinflation, as you noted, Cliff, or, or a severe recession or downturn, uh, or even a whole uh, systemic reset, whatever, if this happens and it happens on one party's watch, I, I would bet that that party would be screwed for the next uh, two to three decades. Um, Leroy, let me start with you. Uh, for a major systemic crisis to happen in the next year to two years, 
what do you think the odds are? Because I would, I'm, my, I'm guessing uh, that the, the, the powers that be are going to be fighting this with full force. Sure. Look, the, what you shouldn't be watching right now is the fact that the average person in the U.S. right now cannot afford to participate in the stock market. What I mean by that is this. The Dow Jones industrial average has now become so overpriced that it would take 27.51 weeks of income for an average U.S. employee to afford the Dow Jones. That's over three standard deviations higher than the historical uh, standard deviation. Just to give you an example, in 1980, when the last major bull market um, uh, in, in the Dow Jones started, it was 2.93 weeks of income. So right now, it takes someone so much weeks to participate in the Dow Jones and in, in, uh, in the stock market that this is unsustainable. What that means is there's, desper there's desperation for the average person because on the one hand, he's seeing zero interest rates on, and he can't make income. I would, I would say this, the, the type of retirees that I'm speaking with are telling me that they have saved up a million dollars for retirement and they were banking on 5% bonds. Now at 5%, you're getting 50,000 a year. Let's say you live 20 years after retirement, that's a million dollars worth of interest rates, of interest income that you were banking on that now you don't get. So what do you do? You try to make it up by investing in the stock market, but now you can't even do that. So you save and save and save because that you have no other option. Along comes uh, this new president with major infrastructure plans, with major stimulus plans for the U.S. economy. And a lot of people are banking on a major change in the U.S. And that's why we see major banks for the first time in years becoming bullish on commodities worldwide. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about precious metals. I'm talking about um, base metals like zinc, like cobalt, like lithium. Um, we're seeing so many uh, things intersecting in that perspective. And it's just important. I know that Cliff already mentioned this, but mining companies are, uh, there's thousands of mining companies now, uh, over history, there have been very, a very select few individuals who have, who have founded companies that have made shareholders uh, a fortune. It's very hard. It's a hard business, Cliff. I, I'm sure you would agree to mine out of the ground. It takes so much effort at, at, at the beginning, even if you find a discovery, and therefore you need to stick with with a very uh, specific individual. Do, do you agree with that, Cliff? Well, certainly. Well, certainly. I've done mining. It's it's terribly difficult. <laughs> C Cliff, I, I want to turn the the conversation to to this high, uh, potential hyperinflationary event. If this happens on Trump watch, Trump will probably likely be impeached easily by the Republican Congress or the new Democrat Congress that would take over in uh, less than two years. Uh, what do you What do you think? I, the I powers don't see either of those. I say I don't see either of those as necessarily guaranteed. Okay, I don't see it as a uh, Republican president and a Republican Congress. I see it as Trump versus the establishment, and he's desperately. I actually see it as a counter coup. All right, um, so uh, Trump is in place because of his um, uh, staff guys and and the thinking that was involved there. So I'm not necessarily of the opinion that impeachment would follow any kind of an economic issue. They're going to try and impeach him no matter what because the the establishment is desperate to get rid of him what what we are looking at here is a race and this race needs to be put into its most crude form in order for everybody to understand economically but there are a, a very large percentage of the power elite that have been involved in a global pedophilia network of the most disgusting kind. And uh, we're looking at the race that Trump has to enforce the law, rein in the pedophile network and arrest those individuals and then move on. Now, in the process of, of arresting them and getting them 
removed, a lot of the oppositional power goes away. The oppositional power is desperately afraid of their own position now and is not reacting ideologically. So as long as there are any of them in power, you'll still hear calls for his assassination, calls for impeachment, and all of this kind of thing. But it is a faction A versus faction B kind of a deal. And so if one wanted to look at it at that way, I'm one of those guys, by the way, I'm 64 years old this year, so I'm one of those people that has to save for retirement because there's no vehicle to get money out. But now, I have a suggestion within the data sets, and if I were going to take a speculative position in stocks, and, and there's a big issue with stocks because of the rehypothecation and seven shares being issued when they say only five are being issued, right? That sort of thing. But beyond that, if I were going to do that, I would pick out specific companies that I knew would have a placement in, in the upcoming woo-woo boom uh, that's going to be coming out of Antarctica. Now, this, uh, the... Uh, uh, pressure I see within our data sets, the continual references to Antarctica, are in fact backed up by reality. If you'll hunt for jobs in Antarctica, look for corporations doing business there, you'll see that there's this quiet boom going on. And uh, I suspect from what the data is showing that if one had to make money, say over these next five years, independent of whatever interest rates or, or any of that kind of stuff goes on, well, it might be a very uh, worthwhile uh, risk to take putting money into some of these firms. Now, the interesting thing I've noticed about these co corporations going down to Antarctica is that a lot of them are really interesting as to how they approach it. Let's take SAIC, for instance, right? SAIC rebranded itself as Lados, cast off all of these uh, ancillary growth positions that it acquired in the past 20 years and focus, refocused its core operation on services provided to governments in Antarctica. And the internal documentation su suggests that they expect to get a, just a huge whopping return on investment on the order of 75% of every dollar put in. They expect to get a return, that, that 75 cents in, in addition to that, back out within the first two years. And so something is up down there that nobody's talking about, but corporations are responding to. And if you really get out there and sniff the data, you can find companies like this. And that would be my suggestion. I mean, it's risky and so on, obviously. But if, if I'm correct, the uh, pedophile networks will be rounded up. We'll have to rebuild in the United States. It's true. And commodities are going to be a big boom. But we need something external to our money system in order to be able to survive the crash of the big banks because they're going to they're going to basically end up dying in my opinion uh, simply because of the underlying problems with uh, euros the euro which will come on over to us uh, in terms of our our dollar Lior, um what he just said is something you and I were just talking about um, last week what are you doing to uh, physically prepare your family and what do you suggest people do to physically prepare for a, a major systemic crisis that could happen here, uh, an implosion of the banks? Um, uh, let me start with, with just uh, the data regarding gold. If you take the 1980 high and you quantify it with inflation until today, it's 18,416 U.S. dollars. So we are, yeah. So we are definitely not even the 2011 high. Uh, you know, uh, based on growth of real money in the U.S. money supply is 2,800 at uh, 2,986 $2, dollars. So we are a long ways off from the inflation adjusted and the real U.S. money supply adjusted price of gold. And the reason I point this out is because any kind of a black swan event that Cliff talks about could make gold a lot higher. With regards to what I'm doing personally and what uh, my family's doing, um, there's a couple of things that, that are uh, uh, outside of the box and a couple of things that I, I think just every person who understands the type of, of environment that we live in should focus on. First of all, I'm getting uh, another passport. So basically, I don't only own one passport. I have uh, um, two, and I'm getting a third one soon. And that is just to, to de-risk myself politically. That also gives you uh, options with regards to where you store your wealth. 
for example, you can buy real estate in a number of different countries. You can store your gold in a, in a number of different countries. And I know, Daniel, uh, that you do the same thing as well. And uh, we also separate uh, separate uh, brokerage accounts into a number of different countries. That way, if there's any problem with capital controls or anything like that, you're very, um, you know, not everything you own dries up at the same moment. I think that is a very important uh, uh, part of this. And obviously, cryptocurrencies are very important, uh, such as Bitcoin, because they allow complete anonymity, same as gold, they're outside the system, which is very important. Um, the, the most important thing that I do is to make sure that my main source of income, my main skills, are sharpened up to the max and therefore in any type of environment any type of economical event there's there's demand for what i provide and therefore i think that is the most important thing any person can really focus on because that's what you can control cliff uh last question goes to you sir um looking at what you had noted with uh very very uh i guess out of the mainstream things that are happening behind the scenes. They were able to bury uh, in the mainstream press everything that happened with WikiLeaks and Hillary Clinton. Uh, we would get a few snippets, but really for the most part, it was never it was never a major part of the news cycle. Uh, what makes you so certain that you think um, these companies with subliminal messages and other companies and other individuals, uh, that this will actually be able to be reported by the media, which is owned by just a handful of conglomerate and conglomerates and corporations won't well, matter it doesn't matter whether or not it'll be reported by the media that's owned by the corporations because those corporations themselves are under assault so disney really screwed up by hassling pewdiepie all right because they pissed him off um and in doing so they are now the subject of his uh, uh, stabbing humor that is in fact changing the um, they're the post millennial generation generation Z and all of these kids are waking up so I've got eight and nine year olds that are communicating with me because they want pointers to find out uh, uh, which part of a conspiracy uh, which part of the theory around a conspiracy actually has more uh, validity than not okay so this is a radical change uh, uh pewdiepie is a he's like the reigning uh, god of youtube if he should move and decide to take his action to any one of the other youtube clones that are developing uh it would be my suggestion that youtube and google stock would crater simply because you would have close to uh well you'd have 53 million subscribers plus his girlfriend subscribers that would leave and then you would have uh, all of those views gone so maybe they would lose 18 or 20 percent of their ad revenue with a single exit by that individual and then everybody that piggybacks on him and so on so the corporations themselves are now uh, their media has now been made irrelevant uh, so what if CNN gets a million views on on their YouTube channel in a week on all of their offerings when Alec Jones gets uh, 40 million downloads on his show and up to another 80 million downloads in any given month on all the ancillary shows that he produces it obviously tells you where media power lies so and I would also suggest that anybody that is a uh, retired Tire E or anybody that is in the money business that is relying on broadcast media as their source of information is going to get scalped in what's going to be happening uh, financially the rest of this year. You need to very seriously broaden your view. So as far as I'm concerned, Disney and these people won't be hoisted and hung in their own media and it won't make any difference at all.